you talk about um, the wide receivers, how it's all going to come together in this offense. I mean, people see Tyreek and they see Jalen and all that speed, but what do you think this offense the identity is going to be this year? I don't know. I think we're still developing that. That's why you're out here in practice doing all this stuff. I mean, we're going in the second day of pads, so we're going. We're trying to figure out who we are, who's going to be involved, who's doing what, who can do what. I mean, that's that's why we come out here in practice. So I don't think you. You know, we're, we force guys into roles to do things. I think they're going to determine what they do by, you know, what their off-season work is and what they do out here during camp and preseason. How are you doing? Good. What's going on? Oh, nothing. I like the shirt. Oh, thanks. I like the shirt. Bright green. Yeah, you got a lot of run, – runners always got a lot of extra T-shirts because you get one at every race, right? Well, I've done this race 30 times. So you have at least 30 T-shirts. Yeah, yeah I love right. it. I love it. I love it. So um, – I've only been out here a few days now, but one thing that I've noticed is, you know, your ability to move running backs in and out and still get some production out of seemingly everybody. Um, you have to be pleased with just the depth that you have at running back. Is it better than it's ever been while you've been here? Well, it's certainly bigger. I mean, when you have seven of them, that's a, that's a, that's a lot of guys. Um, to have and then two fullbacks so there's nine guys in the room which is a big group but it's a great group and they're it, that group of nine guys they're they're focused they're passionate they all want to be good they all want to be the lead dog which you love that competition that's creating there but they're able to have that mentality and still work with each other and that's a big thing because we're going to need more than one at some point in time and so that that ability for them to say hey look I'm competing with this guy and I'm trying to do everything I can to beat him out and to be above, better than him and above him. But at the same point in time, I'm helping him. I'm sharing information with him to learn, pick up schemes and what we're doing. And then you get on the field and you rotate them in and that's why we, we rotate them like that because we, we want them to all get not equal but relatively similar views so we can evaluate them apples to apples. I know this is kind of unanswerable, but I got to ask it anyway. Is it unrealistic to think of one guy becoming your workhorse because you have that depth? Isn't it more likely that there's going to be a rotation? I don't. I don't know how. That, I don't know how that goes. I've had there's there's years where one guy has that I've had where one guy has been the prime, predominant workhorse. There's been years when I've had two guys. There's been years where I have three guys. I played in. We had a game in Denver one time where I lost both my started my, both my top two backs in the first in the first half of the game, and my third back had 32 carries in the game. So you're going to need everybody at some point in the game. And so we got to get them all ready. Let them compete. Let them showcase what they're going to do, and then they determine the value, the place, the role, and the responsibility on the team. That's what they determine by everything that they're doing. We heard Alec Ingold mention that, uh, I believe he said Chase was a bell cow running back. Uh, is that something you agree with? or And also, does that have anything to do with, with most, or do you think he's going to be 100% go from, from the get-go? We're a second day of pads. We get, yeah. You know, all that stuff is that's so premature right now. We don't know. I'm, I'm still getting to see what these guys look like in pads yet. I don't. Yeah. I couldn't definitively tell you what my opinion is of them in pads at this point. We need these days and stack these days and find good work, and they'll determine all that as we go. But we're, we're way we're, we're ways away from being able to say this is going to happen or this is how it is right now. We're, we're not at that point. Most of heard the other day he had the fastest time out here. Mm -hmm. so he can run. Is he, does that show his fitness level overall or his, his health level overall where he might be ready to for – as many carries as you wanted to give him week one, or is that too early to? Is that he's the fastest guy out here? I don't know. It's how he's moving in general. Like, is it? Is I mean, that he's it, it, speed wise shows he's fast. That's a that's a DNA gift, probably. You know what I mean? He, he's a good football player too, though. He's a really good football player, and we've got a room full of them, and they all have unique skill sets. They all have to rely on their strengths and minimize their weaknesses, and then we'll see how it plays out. Is it hard? I know for us in the stands. It's hard, but maybe not so for you to judge running backs when you're not tackling near the ground and when you don't have pads on, you know, for that first week. Is it hard to tell, you know, what you're getting, whether a guy broke a tackle or didn't break a tackle? I don't think that's so much what we're looking at at those times. What we're looking at is, is assignments, aiming points, eyes, what we're looking at, what we're seeing. It's kind of a precursor to the pads. So let's get everything lined up, and then we'll get the pads on. Now let's cut it loose and go. And it, hopefully we've kind of taken some of the little things out. Hey, our reads are right, our tracks are right, our aiming points are right, everything that we're doing in there. 
Um, and then so that when we get pads on, now we can play and give ourselves the best chance.